The thing, especially at Pixar, is they reiterate over and over and over again. You're gonna need other people's input to understand if something makes sense and resonates. You really have to come at it in a way that you're like open to knowing that you don't have all the answers. You might have to change things or rethink things. There are always those people, amazing brains, crazy talented, but collaboration maybe isn't their thing. I found the best way to deal with it is let them be themselves and let them execute their thing. I'm Daniel Chong. I am an artist working in animation, and I'm probably best known for being the creator of a TV show called We Bear Bears. I'm Grizz, by the way. Ice Bear. And you must be Panda. A story artist, first movie I ever worked on was called Bolt. It was a movie at Disney Feature Animation. I worked on some Minion movies, a Cars movie. Uh, but the last thing I did before I made my TV show was uh, Inside Out. It kind of permeated the, the culture, you know, in a big way. And now I'm moving on to directing a movie somewhere else. Right before Bears, I guess you could say I was at Pixar. I think as a storyboard artist on those movies at Pixar specifically, you're just kind of like taking the script and uh, turning them into drawings so that you can visually see how it is. Uh, I look back at it now and I'm like, I don't know if I would have hired me. But I think that one thing that I remember somebody who interviewed me and hired me did say that I that they liked my portfolio. You know, I had the typical portfolio where you see all my storyboards, but at the back, I had these little books that I had written, kind of comic strip books that I made and then I zeroed Xeroxed them and then just clipped them together. And I just kind of threw them in the back just for fun. He said that reading those kind of showed that I was a little bit different, that there was something about me that felt fresh. When I was growing up, I didn't just draw, I also wrote. I always was approaching it from, does this drawing have an idea? Is there a joke involved? Those are the kind of things that are kind of what make or breaks a person being able to make it actually survive and sustain in the industry. At Pixar, the Brain Trust is a series of directors that can come in and just give feedback. You can basically get whatever directors you want in the room to help kind of give you the right feedback that you need. I mean, that's honestly how they get their movies to at the level they are. I mean, obviously there's a lot of smart people investigating them and critiquing them. The thing, especially at Pixar, does it more than any other studio, is they reiterate over and over and over again. I mean, every artist, I think, will deal with struggling with iteration. Really, at the heart of it is the humility to know that you're not gonna get it right the first time. But on a whole, I found that humility really helps the process a lot. I think a little bit of humility is necessary and removing the ego as much as possible has been a really important part of the way I lead things how I work with others, even deal with the business side of it. Of course, your first reaction is, no, I don't want to do that. You don't know, understand what I'm trying to make. You're going to need other people's input to understand if something makes sense and works and registers and resonates. And so you really have to come at it in a way that you're like open to knowing that you don't have all the answers. You might have to change things or rethink things. Honestly, the most memorable thing was working on it with the crew. I really loved the people working on it and Pete Doctor was really fun to work work with it and I could tell that he loved the story process and he loved being around us. It's basically community, you know, it's a community of people who are creative minded people who can help guide you as you're trying to create your movie. I think really that is the essence of it is that you're getting a community of people who are helping to collaborate with you on that process. The concept of it really just came out because I was like doodling next to my girlfriend's niece and we were just messing around on paper. And uh, I just drew these three bears trying to make her laugh. She laughed and I was like, okay, maybe there's something here. Yeah, I turned that into a comic strip. I made a couple of them and put them online. Nobody read them, nobody cared. When I realized I wanted to make my own show, uh, bears was just something I had. And I basically just took that and started developing it into a show. One of the things I made sure to highlight in my pitch was like, here are these characters, here's the fun things that they do, here's how the dynamic of their relationship works. And I think that became very pivotal to selling the show because I think you, they want to get a sense that this show has legs and you can do a lot with it. The thing that I had built in just from the comic itself is I had them in the stack. There was a kind of hierarchy that existed because of a stack, you know, you have a top, middle, bottom bear. So when I'm adapting it, like what is the intuitive relationship that these characters could have? When I kind of struck me that, oh, I see, they could maybe be brothers, you visually could see their relationship 
My process has been the same ever since I started creating my own thing, which is that I draw it out. Take a sketchbook, go to a coffee shop, and fill it up with drawings. Another thing that I think I've found inspiring, to go back to the things that I loved as a child, and looking at those things again, and finding out, why did I like this when I was a kid? A lot of times you look at it, you're like, oh, this is horrible, why did I like this? But there's always a reason, because I think it also teaches you, like, why did you become who you are? As a director, part of the work when I build a team is to hire the right people. That is instrumental to making sure that I can make what I need to make. So I kind of find that what has been a skill I've had to learn is how to pick the right people that will fit into my world and into the kind of thing that I like to do. That skill takes time because in order to know who's gonna work well for your project, you have to know who you are and what you're good at and what you are gonna do. But I think earlier on, I, I made a lot more mistakes about bringing in the wrong people. There are so many amazing, talented people, but they're not all the right fit for you and your project. Really amazing brains, crazy talented, but just not collaboration maybe isn't their thing. I found the best way to deal with it is when you deal with people like that, and let's just say you have no choice but to have them on your team, let them be themselves and let them execute their thing. And then basically take what they've done and use what you can, but then tweak the rest. Because I think it's hard, really hard when you have a voice like that and you just try to keep giving them notes to make it more like your thing. They're just gonna keep pushing against you. So the best thing I've discovered is just let them be free. They just need to run. And then you can always tweak it later. But they're always gonna obviously give some pretty amazing stuff. I think the biggest thing that we struggled with on Bears, it's all about knowing all your restrictions and limitations so that you don't accidentally make an episode that's unproducible. And we made a lot of unproducible episodes that like we were, and it's painful to get an episode working, but it's too big and then having to cut things out of it. And I think the reality when it comes to like storytelling is that it can take so many forms. It doesn't necessarily have to be a $200 million movie. So I think it's really about starting off knowing how to be scrappy and simple that kind of help teach you how to deal with constraints. But if you know how to handle small, scrappy things, you'll always know how to blow it up and make it bigger. We had this thing we used to do called pitch day on our crew, and then we would always have those, put them on the wall, and then we could always pull ideas, combine them, tweak them. And I think that helps push concept of the show in different places that I definitely would not have thought to do myself. There are a couple kind of points, I think, that were very clear, like things were shifting. Maybe even the third season, people become more aware of the show. But there were some other big markers. There was a big one when I went to visit China and they were gonna start airing the show and they took me to a store called Miniso. <laughs> and it was crazy. It was like a pretty big store and it pretty looked much looked like the whole store was Bears merchandise and I couldn't believe it. There was like walls that were like full of plush. It almost looked like a weird art exhibit, you know, like some modern art exhibit where they were just like making a statement. It's a little weird, but it's also hard to deny like, wow, something has shifted here. The power of animation is just that you question less of surreal things, weird things. And I love that because it just gives you license to be more imaginative. People move on and accept it a little bit more. I grew up in the suburbs, you know, more or less in Southern California and Orange County. It wasn't really a whole lot of inspiring things around me. The Bears to me became this kind of metaphor for outsiders trying to fit in into human society. It's this feeling that everyone relates to of trying to fit in, trying to find their place in the world and trying to find acceptance. To take away any pretentious feeling of what I thought that show was, really what it came down to is I just want to make people laugh. That in and it of itself is a connecting thing, you know? I think after Bears was over, I just wanted to make a lot of things and you want to see if you can make something even bigger. Yeah, I mean, I can't talk too much about my next project, but it is a movie. I'm really excited about it. It's weird, like when I look back now, especially at the age I'm at now, I do feel like I've attained more than I ever thought I ever would. All I could want more now at this time in my life, looking into my future, is just to maintain and get to keep making things that I wanna make with working with people that I really like. And if I can do that for the rest of my life, I think I'm good. I, I hope I can keep going and uh, keep making stuff for as long as I can.